Many of you have asked for more in-depth videos on my process. So today I'm going to show you how you can make an interior rendering like this in about 30 minutes. I'll take you through my brush menu. I'll show you which brush I use and why. And then I'll show you every step I take to build up a rendering from a blob like this to an image that looks like this. Ready? So here are the brushes I use most often. I put them in a palette called JA. These are the architectural brushes. And then these are the natural brushes. And these are the lighting effect brushes. And these are some of the special texture brushes I like. So let's go through these one at a time and see how I use them. The flat brush is for layouts and for loose thinking, trying to figure out the composition of a rendering. You can play with the size of the brush and the opacity of the brush. I just kind of wiggle around until I get something. And then as you get closer, you can start to make sense out of the room. Find an approximate horizon line. There's a painting on the wall. Window at the end. And furniture. stuff you can even put in shadows. And you can put in beams on the ceiling. The next brush is the technical brush, which makes a, a line like a pencil. I like it because it's very fluid, very, very thin, very thick, or you can vary the stroke even with the same setting. Let's get that. The typical way that I use this is I'll add a layer above the first rough layer. Make sure I have the technical pen. And I'll start to add details just to make that loose sketch a little tighter. So, again, this will. Help me get a feeling for what I'm trying to do. The 
closer or the more transparent this pen is, the less scary it is to use. I still keep things loose. And again, I won't pick it until we can see this drawing so you can be very carefree with it. that all of these lines are going off to the vanishing point. I need to use this pen to make some shade and shadow. Where this can come in handy is to start to start to use the perspective guide. So I can take all of that, push back the opacity, and then add a new layer, and then activate the perspective guide. Some canvas, activate the drawing guide, select perspective, and then find the point that's a little bigger. Adjust the perspective guide this way, but I'm going to find roughly where the best place is. For everything I've already drawn. So you can see it's you know, things aren't matching up exactly in the freehand. That's okay, that's close enough. And now I can go into here and I can turn on drawing assist. And I can start to trace this so you can see it the perspective the perspective guide blocks in all these lines now I've actually got two finishing points Sketch. So I'm going to go back into the perspective guide now and find that second vanishing point, which is way out here. I'm going to drop it and then you can see it's getting hard to, getting hard to tell. Where it is. Well, I'll do my best to approximate that, and then I want to make sure that this horizon line is on the same grid so it really is horizontal. That's close enough. I do this. Double check that I've got drawing assist on. Go back, and now these lines. Will also follow the perspective assist lines. So and as you're doing perspective assist, you can always overrule it by just holding holding down. Here's the coffee table. Now I can also turn off the drawing guide. It'll still 
use the drawing assist, but I just don't have the grid anymore. assist will try and jump to horizontal or vertical but just stay at it and get it right. You can also at any time make a have a nice frame around the drawing. Okay. Let's put some very really simple beams in. some ceiling boards and you should all be lining up probably but just for this exercise let's not do that and let's have a light down over the coffee table for that let's we'll switch to the solid circle assisted layer. That is how the flat brush and the technical pen work together to help get you started. Now even though I've got tone back here on this layer, only the layer that got me started. So I am going to go back to the flat brush and I'm going to fill some of this in freehand. I'm going to find a good size for it, find a good opacity for it. And I'm just going to just real loose tone up here. Care that it's scratchy yet. It's just like using markers back in the old days. Okay. This needs to be 
Delta side. And I'm going to turn on these. Dark at the back, like this. The shadow of the back. The shadow over here. There's a coffee table. And there's some tone. It's putting shade on the side, away from the light. I can even put small shadows in. side of the beams is going to stay light because of the outdoors. Here's our shell unit. This one looks. Well, that would have been a good place to use perspective assist, so I'll switch to that. Now I'll load up the books. Maybe one big, one or two big objects back there. Put some objects. Here, objects there. Let's put a big ball here. Some more objects here. Let's add something to this. More lamp. So this is starting to get this backlit silhouette effect too. There's our carpet. Yeah, it's not so successful. Let's take that away. Let's add some boards. Now the last thing I'm going to do, so this is starting to look like a room, even though we had no idea what it would be a little while ago. It's just starting to look like something. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw, oh, let's talk about that in a second. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a big shadow to this room and this is one of the best tricks of all start with a new layer i'm going to make sure that layers in multiply go to the selection tool freehand and basically what i'm going to do let me show you what i'm going to do first with the sketch basically i am going to this is not the final shadow, but this is a little sketch. I'm going to make a shadow come. The sun's going to be outside, up here somewhere, you know, out of our picture plane. So the rays of the sun are going to come down like this and hit the building, and they're going to be blocked by the building. So this is the point we're interested in, where the sun enters the room, gets cut off by this beam, and then hits the wall. But it's going to do some interesting things, because it's going to hit this wall back here, but then it's going to pop back out because of the depth of this shelf, and come down this shelf. And it's going to go back in to the same point and continue down. But what's different here is that this shelf is also going to throw a shadow. And that shadow is also going to go off to the vanishing point that we already created. So, the same thing with this. This piece of furniture here is going to cast a shadow down the wall like this. Okay, and then over here the shadow is going to come along. It's going to hit a point back of the painting there, but it's also going to bump out just a little. 
cut the depth of this painting. Then bump back in and continue down the wall. But the painting is also going to have a little bit of a shadow. And I've started that here. Throw that down. And then let's see, one more time, it's going to be this. So given all that, now I'm going to throw in the big shadow. I'm going to lighten this so you barely see it. Go back to my black. Go back to my multiply. Back to the selection tool. And now I am going to trace this shadow from here to here. That shadow is going to put all of this in silhouette too, remember. So I'm going to keep the selection going around everything here. back to this wall and then I'm going to trace that shadow selection back down across this painting and then put a little dimple in there back over it. Now it's a little tricky here because I have to go back under the painting the way the painting also casts a shadow then back here then back to the big line down the wall and now I'm just going to close off the entire upper part of the room because all of that would be in either shade or shadow. And here's, I'll give you an example of where we are so far. Here's the soft brush. And that's very important for shadows. Soft brush, I'm going to make it big. And I'm going to just slightly brush in here. Okay. But this part where the sun that is in direct contrast for the wall is going to be darker than this part up here, which is going to be more in shade. Now I also came down these, if you remember. I'll throw them a little bit there. Okay. So if I turn off the selection and I may be a little too dark. Let's show you that transparent here. And you can see, I can also come back, if that is too dark, I can come back in and lighten it this way. So it really features how the sun comes in across these walls. And I can also take out some areas to give them some more life. So as I look at this, I don't really like this shadow because I want to I want to show how objects in the room cast shadow on the floor and how the mullions cast a shadow on the floor. So I'm going to turn this off, add a layer, and together we're going to do a real quick new version of the shadow. Um, this is the line where I want to make sure we see the shadow come and, and hit here because it means the shadow will also cross the um, piece of furniture in a, in a cool way. So I'm going to guess roughly where I want the shadow to be. Let's say it's back here. Um, come across like this. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen here is that once a shadow comes in this steeply into a room, and let's say that that shadow crosses this piece of furniture about here, and then travels back across the top of the furniture like that, and actually it might look good to have that little corner of the painting stick out from the darkness. So let's say that this is the line of our new shadow. It's going to erase this little piece here. And 
So the point I was making is that in order to do this, the mullions are going to come, the mullions are no longer going to be, the shadows are no longer going to be parallel with these boards, but they're going to also come in at an angle. And technically that means they're now going off to a new vanishing point. So when you want to plot your shadows, you're going to want to be thinking about where the vanishing point of those shadows is. Uh, so this same idea will apply to this mullion. It'll hit the floor and then its shadow will travel across the floor like this. Uh, the same can be said about everything in this room that um, if the coffee table has legs like this, then the legs will go like this. The, the shadow from the coffee table will exaggerate it a little bit, but it'll be off of, um, off of this axis and slightly thrown over to the right. So that'll be the shadow here. Uh, same for the sofa. And let's say that it goes that far. Same for this piece of furniture. That shadow would be something like that. Now where that shadow of the furniture meets the shadow of the ceiling, they, there'll be no more light peeking through. It'll all be one. My main point is that by having the source of light over here, uh, a number of things are going to be what we call backlit or in shade. So this surface will be in shade. This surface will be in shade. This chair back, the sofa back, will actually throw a little bit of a shadow across the sofa base. Uh, you can even get into the level of detail where the objects on the table will throw small shadows. And of course, when you're really doing your best work, all of these things will come into play. And then this wall will also be in shade. And we'll cast a little bit of a, the light source will cast a little bit of a shadow and leave this part of the sofa. Uh, credenza. This part will stay in the light. This part will now be in shade. But the most important thing of all is that this entire part of the room is now in shade. So everything here, everything here, and everything here will be in shade. Now let's look quickly at what that does. I'll add a, I'll add a layer and I'll put it in multiply blend mode again because that makes, that makes the other details in the drawing still come through the layer of black that I'll put into this thing. I'll show you that in a moment. So I may speed this up, but I'll quickly trace this around now. This is the path of our new shadow and it's done to dramatize uh, how you can use more of a, more of a dynamic shadow to make your uh, room, to make your rendering even more realistic and sort of exciting. Notice that I'm bringing this selection up. Uh, I'm going to have areas of shadow in this selection. I'm also going to have areas of shade. I'm going to sort that out uh, later. Let's come back here. I'm off with this slightly. Let's go here, up to here. So now I'm getting back to that shadow cast by the ceiling, that big shadow that we did first. And I come across here. Now that shadow is mingling with the shadow of this credenza. I'm gonna follow that across to here. Now I'm gonna add the shaded portion of the credenza. And now I'm back to the part of the credenza that's going to be in light. And now I'm going to go up the wall 
I'm not going to worry about this mulling for the moment. Up the wall and across, and that caps off the entire area of the room that's either going to be in shade or shadow. And I, I see now that I forgot one or two spots, so I'm going to add in these mullions. And um, by the way, this is very tricky because when things start to get small, a lot of times these selected areas will close prematurely when you don't want them to. So again, I'm going to track this mullion back and pop it in there. And then I forgot to, um, oh no, I, let's go back here. So this time I'm going to select this and I'm going to hit the remove button, which is counterintuitive. And the remove button means it re removes that part from the selection. The same thing will apply here. I want to get this coffee table and this mullion back in. So I'm going to start selecting. There's the coffee table shadow. And again, this is not precise, but uh, it should provide for um, a fairly dramatic example. Here's the mullion coming across, headed off to that vanishing point. And again, I am going to remove this from things. I can add this little detail because this will really make the rendering sing. And again, hit the remove button. That gets removed. Now, I've actually selected the area that's in light, but I, I want to apply the shade to the area that's been uh, removed. So I'm going to hit the invert button down here. And now um, the area that I want to add shade to and shadow to is ready to receive this. I'll go back, double check that it's a new layer, that it's on multiply. And I'm going to choose black at first. And now for the big dramatic move, I'm going to actually do a fill and then reduce the transparency of the fill or reduce the lightness of the tone. We'll see how that goes. So there's my fill. There's two ways to uh, make this more reasonable, although you may enjoy how striking that is. One is to just reduce the transparency of what I just did. But there's also a useful trick uh, because I'm in multiply mode. I can go into the hue, saturation, and brightness, and I can lighten that black that I put in. And the reason I like to do that is because by lightening the color, I've still kept the color completely opaque. Um, in other words, we've gone from black to gray, but this gray is not transparent. It is actually the actual gray, but in multiply mode. So as I said before, all those details are coming through. So you can see how kind of exciting this drawing has become. A very, very simple drawing that we started with half an hour ago. So I could leave it like this. But the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to save this layer because I think it's fun to look at. So I'm going to turn it off after duplicating it. But now I'm going to show you again where that eraser comes into play. And that's the soft brush. So I'm going to make the soft brush kind of big. And I know these are my darkest areas where the shadow hits uh, or intersects right with the brightest parts in the sun. So that is where your eye is going to react to and expect the greatest contrast. But it doesn't mean you can't light, lighten up these areas back here. So let's just see what effect that has. I'm going to come in and just lightly brush. 
And if you look at any room in, in real life where this is occurring, where there's a strong sunlight is coming in, uh, you will see that um, if you stare up at the areas in shade, uh, your eye will adjust to them and it will, it will be as if uh, they're the same color as they always were. But it's the contrast, it's the fact that this great moment of contrast is occurring that makes your eye also close down like a camera lens and makes everything else seem in shape. But for rendering purposes, it's sometimes a good idea to lighten these areas. So let's, let's compare these two now. Here's the, I'm gonna take this red away. Here's our lightened version. And here's the original, very dramatic, all the same color version. But again, yeah, either one is, is acceptable and can be uh, quite striking. So there are many other things we can do to this drawing. We could add an outside on a new layer. We could add a photograph outside on a new layer and push back the transparency of that so it seemed like it was some bright exterior light. That should get you through this lesson of how I use the um, so-called architectural brushes in my palette to quickly create a sketch starting from the absolute crudest thing you can imagine and then ending up with something a lot simpler and all within about half an hour or 40 minutes. So just keep practicing and just keep playing. It's the most important thing. And in our next video, we'll talk about some of these other brushes and the equally exciting things that you can do very quickly with that. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.